I'm Mushy, and you're, well, you're you. Hello, you. And we're here at Dark and Creepy Diamond Painting with uh, an event finale. You guys, we made it. It's the end of the month. Have a heart, eat a brain is concluding. And so, um, as I've done with every video so far this month, event related, I have shown you budget stuff and small shop stuff. And today, is no different. I'm going to start us off with some small shop information and then I'm going to show you a roundup of what I completed this month for Have a Heart, Eat a Brain and then we're going to get to your whip parade. Yay! Excitement! All right, so let's just dive into this goodness here. What is all this? Yay! Okay, so there is a variety of small shops represented here, but my primary focus for this segment of the video is going to be Carissa's Craft Corner. The link will be in the description box down below to her shop. If you haven't checked out her shop, you're missing out. I'm telling you, you're missing out. I've seen several of my friends have discovered Carissa's Craft Shop or have known her a long time. Um, I am just now getting to know this shop, but uh, yeah, I am excited and thrilled. She sent some things over for me to show you guys, and I can't wait. I, I've had a couple days with this stuff, and I have some opinions. I really want to share them with you, but um, yeah, right here is going to be the main focus. You've already kind of seen some of the other peripheral stuff, but so impressive and so much on my favorites list that I had to make sure that I really hammered that point home with you guys. So in case you missed those videos, you kind of know, you know, where to go. And with that, we're going to talk about this stuff. So, um, oh, where to even begin? All right. So this is kind of a combo collaboration of two of my favorite small shops right now. Um, well, in their own rights, you know, I, I have a 3D, a general 3D print shop that I'm learning, I've been sleeping on and I, you know, I'm missing out and I'm loving it. And my favorite putty small shop of life, if you can't tell by this <laughs> massive collection I'm amassing here. But what you see me messing with, this is Alien Putty from Make Your Own Wall Art. Yes, we all know I have an alien putty addiction. The only one that escapes my clutches is pink, for obvious reasons. But uh, eventually I'm going to have to cave and get it so I can say I have the whole collection. And the new latte. Make your own wall art. Meow -wah. Um, yeah, go check them out over at makeyourownwallart.com. Get yourself some latte. Go check Chris out on TikTok. He's very active over there. But one of the things that they ha had done in collaboration with Carissa's Craft Corner is had these little putty holders made and they were selling their sets in, you know, their putty in sets of six. You can get a hard version or six soft version and I believe they had like a mothership which was a doubler of this where you could get the whole collection and this 3d printed holder and I knew there was something special about Carissa and her prints when I ordered this and I got this putty holder and I'm had some time to handle it manhandle it if you will um just this one I think is in the titanium color and it is so smooth. The print is so smooth. There's no rough jagged edges here. No real, you know, like striation marks or anything like that. Everything is just, I did this. This is from me <laughs> sliding it around, but um, just really excellent 3D print quality and craftsmanship. I am super impressed. And not only that, but they have a lot of really fun color variations like this titanium situation. This is so beautiful. It's like a, a black with a dark blue and purple sparkly situation mixed in. And of course it has, because I got it from Make Your Own Wall Art, it does have the meow alien putty sticker here. And this serves to hold, supposed to hold six putties right? 
Oh, if I wouldn't throw it. It's supposed to hold six putties. But me, oh, I want that one on top because I'm going to be using it. I want that one on top. I want that one on top. I want that one on top. <laughs> I want them all on top. <laughs> but no, um, because I, you know, and me and um, whatnot, I made this work for uh, all the putties. <laughs> I kind of pyramid stacked them. But Carissa was kind enough to send over. I, I think she saw the shame, my shame of my pyramid stacked putty situation. But, um, you know, it just goes to show that even though this is a six placer, if you're desperate and you need to, you can use it to hold more. You just have to be a little creative in how you stack your putty. See, it's still, it's still chilling, dreamy. Ugh, Leah took it back, so uh, Dreamy's not here, but I mean, it would hold Dreamy right here, but yeah, look, you can, you could if you're desperate, but, you know, really, what we need, something like this, check it out, so this is um, a putty holder, this is a minimalistic one, and look at the colors, there's a rainbow gradient, man, this is smooth, this is real smooth, look at that, just beautiful 3D craftsmanship here. I Impressive. Really strong, really sturdy. It's got little finger nubbin things so you can get a peek at what's in there for one. You know, you can, if you're, if you're real familiar and you know your collection, you can tell by that little chunk of label you can see, but it gives you the space to reach in and grab it. But yeah, these are just a minimalistic way of storing your putties. And they just slide into these slots right here. And it's meant to, you can lay it like this, or you can set it like this and just grab from them like that. And so, yeah, this is impressive. And for someone like me who has very little space, I, I this is the kind of thing I need. Something minimalistic, not going to take up what, what little real estate that I have. And looky here, looky here, what's happening? <laughs> I can keep all my favorites on hand in whatever order I so choose. And I can still see a snippet of their label so I know what I'm looking for. And voila, now I have room for, I have room for more putties. <laughs> Bring it, Chris. <laughs> I dare you release more putties. I now have the space. <laughs> but yeah, you guys, how nice is that? And I could take them all out if I wanted to. I can pull them out one at a time like this. This is just a phenomenal putty storage situation if you have minimal space. Fits the per the purties? Fits the purdy. Well, I mean, fits the purdy putties <laughs> perfectly. The purdy putties perfectly. Say that five times fast. Eee. Um but yeah, there you go. And I can see the edges of the labels here. And I don't have any trouble, even with my talons, digging each one out. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Love the colors, by the way. Smart not to send me pink. <laughs> Just saying. And then she sent over this uh, release paper holder. I have placed a large order of release papers lately, and I will be placing another order with Bee's Crafty Corner. It's the next shop I want to talk to you about. That's where most of these papers come from. I also have some release papers that came out of Rokari kits right here. For you Rokari fans, you recognize those. And then I do have some release papers from another shop that I have frequented, a Magic Crafts by Cindy here. So we have a variety of uh, release paper shops for which to try this out. But this is similar to the putty holder situation. Look at that. It's the same color print. And I'm sorry, Carissa, because you told me what it was. And I was like, sure, I'll remember that. Let me write that in my notes. Forgot to write it in my notes and um, forgot what the color was. But it's a pretty one. Ah, <laughs> it's a pretty color. Just search up, you know, pretty color. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, look at that. The rainbow effect goes even in 
to places where you don't think to look really you know the underside of the shelf and stuff it's it's immaculate smooth again another perfect smooth print no flaws whatsoever very sturdy very sturdy not flimsy i don't feel like oh i gotta be careful or this is gonna break this feels really good it's lightweight but hefty and sturdy if that makes sense and it looks like we can put all kinds of papers it looks like you can set it this way or you could set it this way i don't see why you can't set it this way yeah uh whatever your space dictates and your preference but let's check it out so here we have let me let me get my mem my membership my measurements how do i get to membership it's one of those days. <laughs> My measurements correctly, this is a four inch by three inch paper. So I could put these in, you know, if I want to set it up like this, I could. Or you could even, you know, sideways maybe if you wanted to. However you want to do it. But you, you put your papers in that way. So they face you. I can put some here. They can go in like this and I can still see them. You know what I mean? I can still see them from right here and reach in and grab them so those are four by three and then we have what oh shucky ducky mushy wishy wait four by three four by three these are the four by fives i think the bigger ones and you could put those in there and we've got the square ones these are four by hello these are all in the wrong packets <laughs> These are four by four, so we can see how the four by four will fit in here just fine. Look at that. These could go up upright too if you wanted them to. Um, plenty of space in here to fit lots of them also. Another, here's another, I should show you guys the patterns too because this is a Bee's Crafty Corner release papers. We've got the True Crime and Murder. We've got some pretty skulls there, little edgy with the chains and whatnot but you can put them in here like this you can put them in here like like this however you feel like storing and displaying your papers we had the sundown sewer monster i had one left over after kidding up for october We've got the fall plaid squares here all bees crafty corner on etsy and then this is from a magic crafts by cindy these papers we have here. These are the, I believe, four by three or four by five. I'm terrible with measurements. These are three and a half by five and a half. Nope, three and a half by three and a half. Dum dum want gum gum. So these are probably the smallest papers I have. Will you fit? Why not? Yep. See, just like that. They fit in here too. And then I can just kind of look through and be like, what am, what am I feeling today? am I feeling? And this looks like it'll hold a million papers. So that's really cool. And then we do have the big, big ones from Rokari Eve. Now those you could put in like that if you wanted to and kind of leave them. You could um, fold them over because they are really tall. These are like abnormally sized ones. Most people I think probably cut them down, but you could fold them over like that. You could cut them down if you wanted to, however you want to store them, but technically they'll fit in there like, like that. You just have to worry about over time them flipping over. But like I said, these are really, compared with like the, the four by five or four by three, whatever, guys measurements, compared to this one, <laughs> you can see how much bigger these are. You know, it's at least twice as big. Very unusual size for release papers these ones are. So I'm pretty sure these are meant to be cut down, if I'm being honest, or just to, like, cover and protect. But, but yeah, there's that. So if you're looking for a more organized way to store your release papers, definitely consider it. And you could even keep everything in their little packets if you feel better about it. This stuff will fit the packets like that see look at that I could have kept them in their protective sleeves just like that and that would have fit in there just fine too okay so I've gotten to show you that and again don't forget my friends the links will be in the description box down below the next thing I want to show you 
I was at first I was like, mm, <laughs> what'd you send me? <laughs> I, I, my, my brain didn't immediately go to washi tape holder, but that's what this is. Um, you know, we have a, a thicker, a thicker column here and a thinner column here, both the same length, but, but I just, let me just, I'll put it this way. I just got sundown a t-shirt recently some of you saw it in a timu video and something similar to that is what went through my head when i saw this and i was like what are you sending me Chris? <laughs> it's a washi tape holder very innocent um <laughs> but if that tells you the kind of person mushy is and where her brain goes first thing off the bat um there you go but yes again smooth smooth perfect craftsmanship not rough no striation lines everything is just smooth the gradient is beautiful everything is uniform this is just phenomenal what this does i i show it to you like this so that you can see um, but what this does is we have a bigger like column and a, a smaller tube column situation because generally speaking we get washi tapes and their cardboard you know circular shape holder situation comes in two sizes like a bigger circle and a smaller one and so we can now store our smaller ones on something like this and then the bigger ones with the bigger holes so some of them have real real big holes and these will go on here to this bigger one and there's enough space to where they won't you know collide and interfere I did test this out and see it looks like this one will hold nine kind of of our more generic average washi tapes it'll hold nine rolls you guys I did not count how many this one would because there's so many differing sizes you got the real skinny and the fat um, but man I can see this holding a bunch a bunch and even if you wanted to you could put some more washi you know the bigger roll on this side it, it's up to you it's what it depends on what you got and what you need to store but yeah there you go look you can display your washi here see what you want take them off easy put them on easy oops except for when you do that and then you have you know a nice neat storage and a display to keep your washi tape very very nice indeed again um this is the washi tape holder from Chris's craft I I've never seen a washi tape holder innovation um I have to admit I've seen like pen holders and maybe you know, maybe paper holders or drill baggy holders you can find and stuff like that but specifically alien putty 10 holders you can tell she's a fan of alien putty right because look I mean in several different designs with you know differing number of slots to fit your budget and your you know collection needs and then a washi tape holder never seen that before and these are such good quality craftsmanship and then she did include us a beautiful look at that shine look at that crap it's smooth so smooth the you can't even see you can barely see here like where the the like pattern came together or whatever but the stripe there's you can't feel it you don't really see it. There's not much of a striation mark or anything. This is just expertly 3D crafted and beautiful. Look at that. That is so pretty. Nice little funnel for when we're pouring drills. So thank you, Carissa, at Carissa's Craft Corner for these goodies to show everybody. And you guys, like I said, these are really good quality. The prints are amazing, strong, smooth you know no f visual errors and striations no you know tactile errors like i don't feel anything that's scratchy rough bump cutty anything like that there's many different options for alien putty holder i mean specifically alien tin putty wait alien putty tin yeah holders and stuff so cool and then this washi tape thing now I can stop knocking my washi tape on the floor every time I breathe too hard. Yay! 
because <laughs> they were just sitting uh, on these little sticks that hang out from the wall with no end and you know every time I breathe too hard boink they'd fall and I do have my little resin skull from true vampire crafts shop on Etsy figured I would remind you guys about this one I have been really impressed with her resin work this is my favorite color of life it's a really great little resin like cover minder is what I've been using it for and it's been working out great for me and I've been loving it and it's beautiful brown and sparkly <sighs> can't get better than that so all right you guys well that's what I wanted to show you on the small shop front and give some attention to Carissa's craft corner and also remind you about some of my favorite shops from this month and with that it's time to show you the completions. Let's go look. Um, real quick though, you guys, sorry. I wanted to show this to you. <laughs> Poor Carissa. <laughs> she was like, ee, you know, um, because we mentioned when we pick up the package that it, you know, the box itself was damaged and I'll show it to you. And she was like, no. And I was like, it's okay. Cause look here. First of all, uh, we did get a notification. This is an official notice from the USPS damaged in handling, accept our apologies, rewrapped and repaired at our Memphis distribution center. Surprise. Anybody who's from the area or has a distribution center like that, you know, but you guys, um, here for, you got a picture of, of that part. She did put fragile stickers all over it and they ignored it because they're big meanies but um look at that that's where the usps admits that they damaged the package right across the fragile sticker <laughs> how ironic right um and she was so worried about everything and i was like oh no you know i'll check it out as soon as sundown gets home with the package and we'll make sure everything's okay and then I op imagine my surprise when i open the package and i see all this surrounding and you know protecting my items and I was like Carissa what were you worried about <laughs> there is like a bubble a bubble wrap factory in here that you could have dropped a the an atom bomb on this box and nothing inside was gonna get hurt <laughs> but just so you know um just how well the packaging look at this packaging that she did with all the protection all like literally every type of bubble thing known to man was in this package lining the bottom lining the sides all around lining the top wrapping every item <laughs> literally nothing was gonna happen to the stuff inside here carissa <laughs> jeez woo um but no, she cares about her customers and her products. And I wanted to make sure that I showed this to you guys that literally, that we all know how USPS has been doing us all dirty lately. Literally, the USPS tried to, like, demolish this box. Even just <laughs> Freddy Kruegered right through that fragile sticker. And with a little note that said, oops, sorry. <laughs> And even the USPS could not defeat her mad bubble wrapping skills. So, yeah, um, don't fear, you guys. And Carissa, you had no reason to be worried because, like I said, you literally sent my stuff engulfed in a bubble wrap factory. <laughs> I love it um, and I love that you care so much about your product and your customers that you took the time and care to package so well to make sure that even when USPS strikes our items will be safe and uh, shipped intact all right now we can move on okay you guys and now I get to show you let me line this up better so it's even um, I get to show you my completions for have a heart and my finger <laughs> have a heart eat a brain this is uh, what I did this month so first we started the event over here with this little um, two skulls forming a heart situation. Very, very pretty. I love that. Then we got onto the inspiration for the event, which was the anatomical heart. And I did add metallics and made it like an, because it looks like an engine. So I made it chromey and whatnot. And then we stopped and did a sneak peek from Raven Diamond Art 
Paging Nurse Lissa. This comes out October 11th, by the way. So if you're liking the way Paging Nurse Lissa looks, look for it on October 11th release. They will be releasing diamond paintings in sets every uh, every week for the month of October. Prepare thine selves. And then we finished the month with Savage from Rokari. This was a beast. 60 by 85 round drill. We did have some AB specials and some glitter specials in here, as you can tell. But, um, you, you know, I didn't think it would take me over 100 hours to complete, but it did. I guess I'll just do kind of a post review for this now. Um, but yeah, this was a 60 by 85 round drill. I mentioned the specials. It took me 101 hours and 27 minutes to complete this diamond painting. I was sitting here thinking that like a, a 60 by 85, um, that's like a 230 by 40s. And if that takes me 20 to 36 hours each to complete, then I should be able to complete this in like 40 to you know, 70 hours. No, no, no. But, um, I must say I really enjoyed the process. I was fully addicted to this canvas. I had a hard time putting it down. I, I enjoyed it. Did I enjoy how long it took as a content creator? No, it was a little too big. I bit off a little more than I could chew for being a, a channel with content that I like to put out on a regular basis. Um, this took too long for my taste, but that's my choice. I chose this canvas in this size and I chose to do it so that I have nobody to blame but myself for that. But as far as actually doing the diamond painting, the process of it, super enjoyed it. It was like a good book that I couldn't put down and guys, I can't tell you why. Um, I can't, I couldn't put my finger on it. I was talking to Devil's Angel Madness, Tanya over there. She was having the same like effect and I was like, um... Maybe Rokari Eve laced the canvas with something addictive. I don't know. <laughs> but we couldn't put our canvases down. Um, you know, and not because we were rushing to finish, but because we were really just enjoying doing them. But yeah, the finished render is gorgeous. Look at that. Super detailed, super gorgeous. Really loving it. The only thing, and it's my it's a personal complaint, not a complaint against the, the canvas or the company, was that it took so long for me to do it. If I was a more casual crafter without a channel with content, I would have loved to just have made this my time sink. You know what I mean? But yeah, turned out great. Turned out gorgeous. Love the process. Um, did not run out of drills, though. There were a couple that had me kind of puckering a little bit, but more than enough to finish the canvas, which was great. And yeah, don't know what else I can say other than pure joy to work on. Fabulous render. Turned out great. Rokari um, at rokari-dpa.com. If you use code MUSHYROCKS, you'll get 15% off your order. And they are releasing a new image every day in October that will only be available in October. So once November 1st rolls around, anything you they came out with like in October that you liked will be gone. Poof. So uh, if you're looking for some limited edition rare diamond painting canvas images and, and kits, uh, definitely go over and check out rokari-dpa.com. And don't forget to use code uh, MUSHYROCKS. Some of you have been like, oh my gosh, I ordered and totally forgot about the code. That's 15%, y'all. Okay, well now you've seen what I've done and it's now time to see what have you done. Let's go check out that whip parade. Have a heart, eat a brain finale. Sam Moore. Cassandra Poole, Terry Maddox, Diamond Painting with Jack, YouTube, Devil's Angel Madness, YouTube, Craftyish Kristen, Joyce Shorter, Javine Ranger, Diamond Painting with Coco, YouTube, Louisa Fox, Crafts with Nightingale, YouTube. Marie Kidd. Veronica Wilson. Lynn Stone Bondock. 
Galaxy, the Alien Queen, TikTok. Ephemera 3D, Etsy. Melanie Padilla. Rokari Eve, Rokari. Julia Klimek. Brittany Ritter Perez. Lisa Hall. Bass and Girl Crafts YouTube. Kayla Spry. Diamond Crafts by Eileen YouTube. Diane Hamilton. Gina Richardson. Julia Bridges. Yolanda M. Jennifer Brueggemann and Cute Grandsons. Kim Lawyer. Diamonds and Cats YouTube. Margarita Martinez, TikTok. Leah May. Joy Lynn. Jay Bennett. Dawn Marie, Nana's Crafty Gems, Etsy. True Vampire Crafts, YouTube and Etsy. Cassandra Priest. Diamond Nana, YouTube. Nene's Craft Place, YouTube. Lisa Trevitt. Erica Travis, Becky Leclerc, Desiree Jameson, Diamond Painting Bewitched Cat, YouTube, Tracy LaFerriere, Janice Newton, Caroline Brown, Trisha DiGarolamo, Ashley Sheckles, Vivian Ellis Milani Aber. Uh-oh, what's this? Buddy, here we are. It's that time. I know I said there wouldn't be any prizes, but you know me. Um, Sometimes I'm a little fibber pants. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, I just, you know, can't do this every time. But I could do this this time. And, you know, I didn't want people to join just because I had prizes to give away. So, just go into every event not expecting a prize because there won't always be one. But like I said, if I can, I absolutely will. And so here we are. You see before you a wheel of this month's event participants for Have a Heart, Eat a Brain. This is everyone that submitted any kind of progress picture to me. Omitted from this list are people that said that they were going to participate, but never submitted any further like progress or finishes or updates to me verbally or in picture form. So I never kind of heard again. We have over 50 entrants. So let's see who the lucky winner is. Are you ready? Oh, you probably want to know what the prize is. I'll insert a uh, screenshot here. There it is. It's an anatomical heart canvas, a tin of alien putty clout version, and a 3D printed funnel from Carissa's Craft Corner. All right, are we ready? All right, let's go. Let's see. Eee! Here we go, spinning, spinning. Melissa Ezel, you have won the prize. If you'd like to claim your prize, you have, um, what is today? Late Sunday, I'm so sorry. I'll give you until Wednesday at 11.59 CST to reach out to me and claim your prize if you'd like it. Please Stay do naughty. let me know. Congratulations.